Hello and welcome to Program Artist. Today we will talk about Dijkstra in the real world. For those of you who don't really know what Dijkstra algorithm is, you can watch my previous episode about the Dijkstra algorithm and the link to that episode appears both in the description and in the top right corner of this video. So Dijkstra algorithm, basically what it does, it solves the problem of navigating from point A to point B. The problem is that in the real world the graphs, well the roads that are basically represented as graphs, they have many ways and many nodes, where nodes are the intersections between the roads and the roads are the edges. So if you look at a typical graph of navigating from point A to point B, okay, in the real world, it might look something like this, uh, where there are lots of ways to go from point A to point B, and there are many, many, many routes that go uh, in different directions. Some may get further and uh, create some kind of, like imagine if this is a city and there are lots of roads in this city and you want to get from the center of the city to the suburbs and we can get to the highway, okay, the quick highway of the city and we can get to that highway in different ways from the center of the city. So. For now, we are just interested in the shortest distance. So, as you can see, probably this is the route of the shortest distance. But what the extra algorithm will do, it takes in each iteration the node with the shortest distance from the starting point and updates all the neighbors of that node. And then takes another node with the shortest distance. So, basically, what uh, the Dijkstra algorithm will do, he will go over all of the nodes that are closest to the starting point, update all their neighbors, and then go to the next layer of the nodes, and then go to, to the next layer of the neighbors. So basically, the Dijkstra algorithm will go over almost all of the nodes of this city, which in many cases where you want to get from point A to point B, which have very large distance between them and a lot of nodes within that distance, within that circle distance, it will take a lot of time to calculate the distance because it will have to go through a lot of nodes. So today I will talk about a modification to the Dijkstra algorithm that will deal with this kind of problem. When we talk about intersections or nodes in the real world, uh, we have more information uh, than just the connection between them. We also have the information of their location, their physical location, their coordinates in the real world. And we also have the coordinates of the starting point and the end point. So when we know this information, we can calculate the potential distance, the potential minimal distance between those points. For example, the point, this point and node B, the minimal potential distance, I will mark it with dots, is this one. And for this node is this one, okay? It is the air distance, the straight line between the node and the endpoint, okay? So even though, for example, we will have a node here, which, which is much, much closer to node A than, for example, this node, okay? The aerial distance between this node and node B is much further away than the aerial distance between this node and node B. So potentially, if there was a connection between those two, the distance of this way plus the aerial distance would be much shorter than the distance of this distance plus the aerial distance from that node to node B. Okay? It is logically, I think it is very clear why it should work. So the modification to the Dijkstra algorithm is pretty simple. It, all it says is, instead of just looking at the distance of the node from the starting point, from the node A, you need to look at the potential minimal distance, which is the distance from node A plus the distance, the aerial distance from that node to node B, the endpoint. It's, it's like saying, let's assume we don't know, like if we're in this point, we don't know how the roads will continue uh, to the end point. 
but in the best case scenario there is a direct road from this point to the destination so when we look at, an, at a node with the minimal distance of the combined distance from starting point and the aerial distance and if we are lucky and there is a connection between those two we will find the minimal distance of all the graph so what this modification can do to, to the Dijkstra algorithm. So when we are starting with node A, we, we are just updating the distances of each of the first nodes from the starting point. So for example, let this be distance 1, this will be distance 2, okay, all of them will be distance 2, except this one, the first one. And let's just add more nodes to connect it to the ring that will finally take it to node B. Now, when we look at the next stage, next iteration of the Dijkstra, in the original Dijkstra we would go over to the next node with the minimal distance, which would be this node, okay, over here, because it is the distance of 1 from the starting point, but in the modification algorithm we'll go to the node with the shortest distance starting with A and the combining with the aerial distance. So because all of, this, all of these nodes are distance of 2, the node with the shortest aerial distance is probably this one, well maybe it's this one, let's assume this one, okay? So we'll look at the distance here, and it's, you can see from this, from this uh, sketch that the distance, the combined distance of this is much shorter that the combined distance of this and this. So the modified algorithm, the modified Dijkstra algorithm, will take this node to be the next node in the next iteration of the algorithm. So he will update, this algorithm will update the nodes, this node and this node, and let's assume their distances are now 3 from the node A, this edge will be 1. So again, we will take the node with the minimal combined distance and let's assume that this distance 3 plus the aerial distance is more than the distance from here with combined this distance aerial distance so the next iteration it will take this node and it will update 3 and 3 okay and now the most closest points are these two and this for me, for my eyes, looks closer, so we will, we will take this, we will update this to be 4 and 4, and now this seems to be 4 plus this aerial distance is closer than 3 plus this aerial distance, to my eyes. Okay, so we will take this and we will update the node here to be 5, the distance from A to B to be 5 with this road. Okay, and now let's assume that well, aerial distance from B to itself is 0, so let's assume that 5 plus 0 is 5, okay, it's, n it's, not, an it's not an assumption, it's actual fact. But let's assume that this aerial distance here is more than 2, so 3 plus more than 2 is more than 5, so we finish, and this is the next node that our modified algorithm will take. So, what happened here is we were like, we were drawn to the node B as from the beginning, we didn't even look at the rest of the of the graph and we were only looking at the nodes that were taking us to the node B. Okay, it might have gone a little bit differently, like for example if uh, we took this node and this node and this node we will get stuck. Okay, so the next node will probably be this, this, this and this and what it means is that not always this will work uh, from the beginning but uh, like for example if this wasn't connected here okay we would got here we would stuck we would be stuck we would check this route will be stuck we would check this route will it will be stuck then probably it will check this route and then it will go through here or through here whichever is shortest but it will be drawn again like it will check all the nodes in this area probably before the, it will get to these nodes so in the real world it will probably work because 
uh, in most cases, if you have a road that going from direction A to roughly a direction of another point B, it will probably somewhere get connected to some road that leads to node B without like taking a really, really long detour. There are not a lot of places where the shortest path is actually going further away from the destination and then going back to the destination like, like this, okay? There are not a lot of places, so this modification to the Dijkstra algorithm will probably work much better and much quicker in the real world than the original Dijkstra algorithm. You have watched an episode about real-world modification of the Dijkstra algorithm. Let me know what you think about it by leaving a comment in the comment section down below. You can watch more algorithm videos by clicking over here, or you can trust YouTube to know what you really want to see and click over here. If you want to watch more code-related videos, check out my channel and feel free to subscribe. See you later on ProgramArist.